This is our uh, Aki Kuahara from our Toyama station. What do you have there? This is called Ori in Japanese. Mm -hmm. and oh. This is a bell. It's, it's a Ori bell. is special bell used Buddhist rituals. Oh, okay. It is made out of um, tin and copper. Tin and copper. Oh, it's a special sound, okay. Aki. Yeah. It is a really special sound. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so the sound just keeps on decaying like this forever. I yeah. mean, you, I bet if you hit it the right way, it will go on for like more than a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the sound is a special sound for this area too, right? The, the sound symbolizes Toyama's craftsmanship. The, the majority of them are created in this region in a city called Takaoka. Takaoka. It has more than a 400 year history as a metal casting town. Mm -hmm. Takaoka is responsible for 95% of copper bells and statues made in Japan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Aki was able to spend time with one company that's attracting people from overseas and the key is the sound. Here's her report. Ocean away from Japan the ancient tradition of Zen meditation is practiced in New York. Michael Byrne is the president of Wellspring Monastery. Up to 180 people visit here per month. But there's something missing. We wanted to have a deep resonating bell that rings all on the property that you can hear throughout the valley. To find the perfect sound, Ban travel to this workshop in Takaoka. It's been making belts for nearly four centuries. Like this peace bell in Hiroshima, a symbol for a world without nuclear weapons. The work requires fine attention to detail. There are hundreds of steps. It takes months to create. All of it carried out by a small team of four, led by Masaki Kusunoki. When we cast metal into bells, we always infuse them with our hope that our clients' wishes and prayers will be reflected in its sound. In recent years, the workshop has received orders worldwide. Its work is on display in temples in Taiwan and at the International Criminal Court in The Hague. More people are practicing Zen all over the world, like in Brazil and France, for instance. of bell making have been passed down through the generations. The lower half is heavier, critical in creating resonating sound that can last for over a minute. So, as the right mixture of metals, carefully measured out to produce a lingering tone. When we add tin, it creates a better sound, but if we add too much, the bell can be easily broken. In early December, work on Burnt Bell began, but before it started, as is tradition, prayers were offered for its safe completion. They are believed to instill Buddha's spirit into the bell. First, metal is heated up to 1100 degrees Celsius, liquefying it, before slowly being poured into the molds it's the make or break moment. That's when I get most nervous. The next day, the big reveal, the bell was carefully removed from the mold. It features a butterfly design specially ordered by Burn. And he already has a place for it. And I'm sure a lot of people would like to sing, see it, and a lot of people are probably gonna try to bring it. So a bell made in Takaoka, mm -hmm. especially for an American Zen temple. That's amazing. Yeah, this yes. is, it is. And here we have other examples of casting that's in modern use, and a special example that makes this beautiful sound. Thank you very much. That was beautiful.
beautiful. Do you see the orange bells are combined oh, into an instrument? Oh, so they're all tuned to different scales. Yes, they're different yes. sizes. And let me introduce to you, this is Hitomi Taninaka. She is a professional player of the orange bells. So tell us, what attracted you to playing this traditional instrument? Uh, this is a very gentle sound. Uh, it makes me feel relaxed, everyone too. Yes, we were relaxed too. Thank you. Thank you very me. much. So we have a few minutes left, Morley. Okay. What are your final thoughts on the show? Well, you know, um, it seems like the whole climate, the natural surroundings, mm -hmm. the history of craftsmanship, um, the heavy snow, the architecture, and the local cuisine with the yellowtail, they all seem to come together mm -hmm. with an underlying sort of spirituality. You know, it's a mountainous region with a, with a bountiful sea nearby. So it seems like people just sort of live together with nature. Mm -hmm. And over the centuries, they've developed a, a kinship, a sort of sense of connectedness to nature. Yes. yes. And we want to appreciate all that technique. Morley, thank you for joining thank you very us much. today on our show. And now Hitomi is joined by her husband, Hideji. Thank you for joining us. And they will play us off. So when you're ready. This is lovely, isn't it? Wow, it's fun. Yes. So this has been our NHK Newsline coverage brought to you from Takayama. Our special coverage bringing you the significance of Hokuriku and Hida regions will continue throughout the week. On Wednesday, Minori Takao will bring you the show from Ishikawa Prefecture, so please don't miss it. I'm Kyoko Toshiro. And on behalf of all the team here, thank you very much for watching the show. And please enjoy the rest of the music with us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Yes.